afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Sara Mustafa from Dentist Channel Online. Welcome to today's webinar about the concept of minimal invasive and full mouth rehabilitation. While we are waiting for the participants to join the session, I will introduce you to our company. Dentist Channel Online is a digital dental media company. It is your marketing solution for dental events, product launches, workshops, and courses. We also provide a collection of scientific articles and blogs about different topics in dentistry. We work hard to be your first-hand information on the technological advancement in the dental field. Now it's time to start the session about the concept of minimal invasive and full mouth rehabilitation. If you have any question about this topic, feel free to ask it in the question and answer box, and we will answer each and every question at the end of the session. I will start by introducing today's speaker, Dr. Mahmoud Atiya. Dr. Mahmoud Atiya is the founder of Studio Dental Center in Egypt and head of medical team. He started his academic career as an assistant lecturer at MSA University in 2011. He is a master's degree holder and PhD researcher at Ain Shams University. Dr. Atiya participates in many national and international conferences. Since the very beginning of his professional career, he has specialized in aesthetic dentistry with his famous workshop, The Puzzle of Venus, Minimal Invasive Dentistry, Functional Occlusion, and Recent Innovation in Digital Dentistry. Welcome, Dr. Mahmoud Atiya. It's our pleasure to have you with us. Thank you so much. You can start the session, doctor. Okay. First, I would like to express my appreciation to be here in Dentist Online channel among greatest doctors and colleagues. And I want to thank my host for today, Dr. Sara, for inviting me here. I'm Dr. Mahmoud Ataya from Egypt. As you can see, I'm specialized in aesthetic dentistry and a staff member at the MSA University in Egypt. Our topic, for today about full mouth rehabilitation. How to start and how to deal about challenging cases with minimal invasive dentistry. I know it is a very complicated topic and it is need more focusing in multidisciplinary approach. But let's make our start today with this topic. When the patients with worn dentition asking you to make the treatment plan to enhance his function and aesthetics, we should ask the following. What is the challenging here? How to start and how to end? The ob objective of our uh, presentation today is how to reconstruct the war dentition using the new concept of minimum invasive, no more endodontic treated tooth or poison core to uh, enhance or rebuild the worn dentition. Uh, material selection of the choice to provide structured durability and a remarkable aesthetic outcome. When to start our treatment planning. Any case we deal with is a, like a mystery box. And when you open the box, there is only two possible ways. One of them, success, if you follow the right guidelines. And the other one, failure, if you don't have the knowledge or you will go to the jail. What is the fastest way to go from point A to point B? Is a straight line, <clears throat> am I right? Which define the knowledge and know-how. <coughs> Excuse me. The more you learn, the more you realize you don't know much. <laughs> Why the wiggly line? You will take so long time to reach the B point. And I doubt you could reach this point without any mistakes. Before starting in depth, let's see some basic signs to put us in the first step in treatment, uh, the stomatognathic system. Stomato means mouth and Ignatic means 
ما الجو the system of the smart hypnotic system acting as a single unit for the process of mastication, regulation, phonetics, and respirations. They are working as a harmony to each to to each uh, other. If any disharmony occurs between these components, occlusal disease will be seen obviously. Let's start with understanding of what the perfect occlusion look like. If I want to a good answer about this, it is the stability of the occlusion. An oversimplified formula is line in front, dots in back. What does that mean? It means that when the jaw closed to the maximum tooth contacts, MIP, both condyle disc assemblies are completely seated up as high as they can go into their respective sockets. This is called central collection. And it is the starting point for everything that we do with an occlusion. The second thing we look for in the perfect occlusion is proper contact of the lower incisor with the uh, upper incisor. Next, we do not uh, want premature contact of any back tooth when the front teeth is touching each other. So when the front teeth touching, it must have disclusion of posterior teeth and either in lateral retrusive, uh, lateral uh, movement of the mandible, uh, either it is canine guided or, or group function. When the jaw moves in the working side, the non-work side should be discluded. For indentition, if we look back to this photo and trying to find the etiological factor of for indentition, tooth wear could be co uh, caused by parafunction abnormality. And it, it is occur is estimated three times faster than physiological tooth wear. The etiological of tooth wear could be classified as mechanical and chemical. I know a lot of us know the etiological factor of the tooth wear, but let's mention it now. I find this photo is very descriptive pictures of differentiate between etiological factor of foreign dentition. The attrition, it is due to the dental contacts with the tooth without any foreign body. It means the loss of dental heart tissue and is mostly occlusive. There are two types of attrition, physiological and pathological attrition. The physiological attrition occurs as a result of normal chewing function. It is usually worn that does not require treatment and continue throughout the life. If there is more than average wear depending on the age and the patient, pathological attrition is mentioned. Pathological attrition may affect also be present in premature contact in the patient with dental malposition and closure disorder. Some parafunctional habits may also lead to pathological attrition. Abrasion, abnormal mechanical factor, is called abrasion. As you see from the photo, they can be due to tooth brushing, most commonly as a result of improper toothbrush. It's seen as a V-shape on the vestibule surface of the incisor canines and premolars. In addition to these, clasp abrasion, snail eating pallets, pipe users using vibrated abrasion. Erosion, it's the loss of dental heart tissue due to chemical reason without a bacterial agent. It's seen as a full, flat, bright pit in the coronal region near the enamel cemental junction. In posterior teeth, occlusal surface are seen as a loss or loss. It could be intrinsic or extrinsic, intrinsic due to polymia, uh, refluxes, and so on. Extrinsic, as you know, acid intake. Up fraction, this is due to occlusal loads. This is a structure of the teeth as a result of the stress occlusal. Uh, load caused by enamel rupture that occurs in the collar of the tooth. 
they are seen in the form of wedges. <clears throat> Another factor which has essential role on causing tooth wear is the prolonged posterior teeth loss, which are not replaced. Thus, the patient tends to chew using the anterior teeth, which resulting the anterior teeth wearing. It makes the patient loss the occlusal vertical dimension. The loss of posterior teeth could generally cause abrasion, attrition in anterior teeth. Occlusal vertical dimension is of extreme relevance because it must be managed by every dentist when performing ex extensive restorations. Vertical changes in a relationship between the maxilla and the mandible have biological, biomechanical, aesthetical, in and three dimensional function. Restoration of foreign dentition is challenging when lack of restoration space exists, occlusive vertical dimension is uh, needed, okay? Once the patient lost the vertical dimension, I need a restorative space to regain the original occlusive vertical dimension. So in order to be minimal invasive without any root canal treatment, the right way in treatment of the war in dentition is the raising of the bites in the central relation. How to read the bite in the central relation? This will be uh, discussed later on. What are the reasons to change the occlusive vertical dimension? When patient came to your dental office, what are the reasons? What he is complaining of? Harmonize of dentofacial uh, aesthetics. He lost his dentofacial aesthetics, wrinkles, and so on. Provide adequate space for restorative materials. He started to feel pain. Why? Because the enamel wear exposed the dentine. This is a function. Yeah, the first one is the aesthetics, and the one is the other one, the function. Improving incisal and occlusal relationship for stabilizing occlusion. Let's go back to the straight line and see the guidelines and how to store it. The guidelines, I mentioned here seven guidelines. I usually follow them to go safely from point A to point B. Diagnosis, treatment planning, smile design, equilibration visits, material selection of minimal invasive dentistry, preparation guidelines, final restoration equilibration. Let's see how to deal with this. During diagnosis, the first thing during diagnosis, the evaluation of mouth opening, muscle disorder, TMJ test throughout different methods as load testing or as a rocapado map of pain. This is a kind of testing how to test the TMJ area, okay? Is it uh, uh, affected by the warren dentition or it is not? How could we check the interference? Posterior interference in, uh, is not allowing the posterior teeth to contact the hyperfunction lateral tergoid muscle will relax. The elevator muscle activity will decrease, which allow the TMJ to sit in the central relation. So the patient in that case must be carefully evaluated. Uh, when the teeth come in contact and with their in, uh, if there is any premature contact, it is starting to slide. Once I touch the premature contact, sliding, sliding. This sliding will cause attrition or parafunction habit later on as a bruxism or clenching. So if this finding is possessed, we should treat it first before proceeding any dental treatment. Central relation of occlusion. Here is the start point of our treatment. If we have premature contact and if we diagnose the patient as he is a proxer, without any, uh, if we ignore any non-dental cause, you know, 
the, 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 the attrition or war indentation, it's caused by multifactorial uh, process like muscle or dental or neurologic uh, cause. Muscle cause myalgia. It is a stiffness of the muscles and maybe the patient suffer from head and neck pain. So you must palpate the muscle, masseter temporalis, and lateral telegoid. If there is tenderness, it is must treat as a muscle first through a physiotherapist before any dental treatment proceed. Here is the key with a start point of our treatment, as we mentioned before, central fellation. We could record central fellation in many techniques, but the most common is a bilateral manipulation by Dawson or lead gauge by Cois. What is the central fellation? How could we reach central fellation or record the central fellation? It is a repeatable, reproducible, and recordable position. In that position, it is recorded in the absence of the teeth. It is a bone-to-bone -bone position with the condyles in the most superior anterior position. In that position, maximum loading of the muscles with no signs of discomfort could be stained. So this is the start point. I could read the bite in the central relations, whatever, five millimeters, three millimeters, two millimeters, as I want, depend on the restorative space needed. Treatment planning. Uh, control phase, any uh, defective restoration should be treated first. Occlusal a record using phase four, wax up, splint therapy for deprogramming. What does that mean? Now, uh, when, we, when we should use the deprogramming, once we start the diagnosis, the treatment plan if we're excluding any non-dental cause of the attrition, we must take phase four record in order to transfer the relation from the patient mouth to the semi-adjustable articulator in order to make the wax up first and to make a deep programming device. What is the function of deep programming device? It is used to deep program the muscles and to find the premature contact before any dental treatment. When we should use the deprogrammer, after occlusal examination, reveal an occlusal muscle disorder or dysfunction that needs to be addressed. The deprogramming device can safely be used. This can be indicated by no tenderness or joint during uh, load testing while in the presence of other signs or symptoms of instability, especially a positive finding of during muscle palpation uh, of the trigoid masseter or templaris muscle. When should I avoid them, the anterior deprogram? Should be avoided in the presence of intercaspular pathology. Here, we need MRI or therapeutic splint. We should treat the patient as a occlusal disease, therapeutic splint, to see where the disc location and condition. We should recapture the disc in, in its location first before going to proceed with the centric relation. The arrangement of the teeth according to the 3D position is an important step in prosthetic rehabilitation and specifically in the reconstruction of anterior and posterior occlusal plan. The maxillary arch also has a definite 3D relationship to all condyle motions and should be positioned in the space by reference points that meet optimal function and aesthetics goals. Accurate mounting of maxillary cast should look like the patient with correct midline anterior incisal plane in order to make a professional and functional mock-up for the patient in the new centric relation. Smile design. This is the advantage of dental photography nowadays. We take photographs for the patient in order to evaluate the incisal display. Exposure of anterior teeth 
with the lips at rest and during a smile needs to be carefully evaluated and planned as tooth display has a significant impact on the appearance of the smile. The position of the incisal edge will greatly influence the functional relationships. The more the incisal edge are lengthened, the greater the amount of closer vertical dimension increase required because the new position and shape of the teeth must not interfere with the envelope of function. As you can see from this photo, why do I take four photos in this patient to see the incisal display and to analysis? He has a low lip line, so I need to increase the length of the incisal edge in the incisal position, not in the gingival part. If he has a low lip line or a gummy smile, so I need to make an aesthetic crown lengthening. So this is the point of the dental photography. Providing adequate space for restorative material. The increase of occlusive vertical dimension is a great uh, for treatment as can generate space to re-establish occlusive morphology. When you lost the vertical dimension, your key point for elevation of the bite is the restorative space needed. Permitting the additive treatment in patient with a structural loss due to tooth decay, fracture, attrition, erosion, or abrasion. The development of materials and adequate strength are combined by the principle of adhesion to different substrate allow the preparation to be minimally invasive. As I mentioned before, when you, when you have case like you see now, in the past, if you will treat this case, the dentist will make full mouth root canal treatments and full coverage restoration in order to make full coverage restoration. This is very, very wrong way. On the other hand, if we raise the bite and we increase occlusive vertical dimension, we could be minimally invasive without any root canal treatment in that case. And this case will be discussed at the last of presentation briefly. The methodology made the treatment extremely complex and costly, both biological and financially. Additive treatment must be carefully planned and tested with temporary restoration, adhesive mock-up, and provisional to evaluate the patient individual adaptation. What did that mean? I must make a full mouth wax up and then try it in the patient as a bonded restoration. It will be uh, our guide for the analysis of the occlusal later on. So here the bonded restoration, I will, could, uh, I will uh, make equilibration and then I will start to follow the patient to see the amount of occlusal vertical dimension I raised. Is it proper for him? If he feel any pain, if the muscle uh, feel any tenderness, Hello. 
Yes, doctor, you can continue, but uh, refill your screen because your notes are appearing. I'm sharing the screen. Yes, but your notes are showing. So if you want to uh, stop sharing and share again. Okay. We can see the notes. Can you hear me? Yes, we are. We can hear you. Okay. It is essential to understand that by increasing occlusal vertical dimension of a new occlusion should be recognized somewhere in a space, improving pre-treatment 3D relationship such as overbite, overjet, functional pathway and the direction of loads on the teeth. Therefore, function will be directly related to aesthetics. The clinician will have wisely negotiate between the amount of maxillary incisal edge lengthening and lingual contour and the proper angle of the function pathway in order to dimension the restorative risk of fracture. Neutral zone. When we finish the wax up, according to the smile design. Here we have a very critical things, which called neutral zone. One of the most drawbacks after treatment of any aesthetic rehabilitation, neutral zone consists of muscles of the lips, tongue, and cheek, which is responsible of anterior teeth relapse and the spacing occurs in the anterior teeth is out of the neutral zone. Sometimes, some of my colleagues ask me, I did 10 units veneers and the patient came after six months with diastema. This is because the technician made the wax up with his best guess, but the dentist should check the length of the incisal edge during the mock-up trial by asking the patient to pronounce the, the letter S. When the patient pronounced the S sound, the incisal edge must touch the inner vermilion border of the lips, S, okay? If, a, if it is exceeding that, it is out of neutral zone. So the orbicularis oris muscle will act as a liver arm, we could say like that. It, it needs to be in its position again, so it will displace the anterior teeth, making spacing. So this is uh, the most critical uh, thing in the anterior teeth, uh, aesthetic rehabilitation. Some dentists, uh, they, they, they do not focus in the uh, neutral zone. They make connected crowns for the 10 uh, units full coverage crown in order to uh, skip because they, they don't know how. The, this factor is very simple. You distract the redundancy by connecting the crowns. If we have a good knowledge, you could make a separate crowns or veneers with highly aesthetics and highly redundancy uh, healthy. A recent innovative tool using digital dentistry allows using mobile application to make 3D facial scanning in order to have all aesthetic elements, including the soft tissue profile. This is one of my patients. Uh, I started made to make uh, facial scanning, as you can see in this photo. Uh, I have her lips, her soft tissue, so it is facilitate the uh, length of incisal edge position without readjustment later on inside the patient's mouth. 
as you can see here, hair lips, I can adjust the length and the width of the teeth in a 3D dimensional picture. In that case, uh, as you can see here, it's a gummy smile, okay? The treatment option here, we will start by examination of TMJ, muscle, mouth opening, premature contact, then wax up and smile design. When you finish wax up and smile design, we decided to make a Botox first and uh, wax up. I usually make uh, the conventional wax up in the laboratory and sometimes I make the digital one. So this is the manual wax up. And I give the patient two concepts and she will decide to take one of them. And this is a digital one. And she will decide to take the first or the second mock-up. Here I will be a minimal invasive. Why? Because I will go and follow the what so-called the guided, pre uh, guided preparation. The mock-up guided preparation to be precise, accurate, and the best lab communication. You will just only need this amount of reduction to reach the fine restoration without any over-reduced preparation. I will show you in that case, the digital era, how it facilitates the diagnosis and treatment planning of the SMILE makeover. Here are our patients, he suffering from multiple diastema. I'm using three shape software as well. I decided to increase the length by 0.7 millimeters. As you can see from the previous photo, he's, he, he, he has a low lip line. Here's the proposal, 2D proposal. In that stage, this is the CAD design. I will design the CAD wax up according to the smile design we, we did before. Here the wax up. I can show you now the amount of the wax up and the, the amount of reduction needed to uh, be to make this tooth preparations. It's very, very conservative preparation. Here is the contour 0.5, so I don't need much more preparation. It will be less than 0.3 millimeters. I can show you now during CAD design, the functional area of contact, which will, which will affect the final restoration. And here, I could tell you I decided to make the canine here wrap around restoration, not a butt joint or window preparation. As you as you know, we have three different types of veneer preparation. Yeah. We have a wraparound, window, or butt joint. The window preparations are the most conservative, but in that case, I want to increase the length of incisal tooth, yeah? So when you, when you increase the length of the incisal, you need to make a wraparound or butt joint. So wind will not be acceptable here because you will uh, make it go under stresses. My choice here in this is a wraparound in order to make the ceramic under compression and to avoid any heavy occlusal contacts. As you can see, this is the final digital mockup. This is the final mockup after we tried it on the patient. He was happy about the result before any tooth reduction. This is before and after. Equilibration visits. Now, 
when we start with diagnosis and treatment planning, let's sum up some of the previous uh, mentioned uh, guidelines, diagnosis, mouth opening, TMJ assessment, uh, starting with the premature contact, then central collation recording, full wax up and full mock-up protocol. When you bonded your mock-up, it's called a functional mock-up. At this stage, you must uh, make an intervals of occlusal equilibration for the patients. You will start bond your restorations and start on the first day of the equilibration using the articulating paper. This is a qualita qualitative occlusal indicators. Are articulating papers, articulating foils, or silk? Occlusal indicators, uh, they determine only the location of the number of the occlusal contacts and cannot assess the sequence of the occurrence of the contacts. The paper can readily highlight occlusal contact but cannot accurately quantify their intensity and measure the magnitude of the generated occlusal force. Very often, the size of the marking area from the articulating paper is considered representative of a strength of the occlusal load, which is incorrect and very subjective. And all by research and papers, it is very, very subjective and not indicated for the heavy occlusal forces. Dawson suggests to start with 100 microns until you reach the eight microns to remove any uh, occlusal premature contact. This is the, for the first visit, and you repeat it in the other visit, an, another one week and another one week, you will make full occlusal equilibration before you start to make any preparation for the patients. This method uh, is quantitative occlusal records. It is a digital sensor which measure the uh, bite force for the patient. It's very accurate. I use, it, I use this method uh, for three or five uh, months uh, ago. It's very accurate. It show you the actual contact and bite force in every tooth. So you can decide where the premature contact precisely. Uh, here's by the CAT software, it's called virtual dental patients. It's like a articulating paper. It's just uh, show us the location of the, the premature contact or heavy contact, not the distribution of force. Uh, it's not very accurate by the digital sensor or occlusal recording system. Uh, it's like uh, T-scan or Oculusense by Bausch. Material selection for minimally invasive dentistry. Here, after we finish diagnosis and treatment plan control phase, mock-up protocol, it's time for preparations. And after preparations, we should choose our battery, uh, uh, the uh, material, the best material of a choice in the Warren dentition. And minimal invasive treatment options have become increasingly feasible in a restoration dentistry. Due to the introduction of the adhesive technique in combination with the restorative material featuring translucency, uh, properties similar to those of natural teeth at present, conventional treatment methods using metal-based crowns and fixed dental prosthesis are considered to be the gold standard regarding clinician survival and success rate. Yes. Ceramometallic restoration, it's have a long, very success rate. However, the extensive removal of two structure associated with the crown and abutment preparation for these restorations is seen be disadvantages. A retrospective studies showed that 15 year survival probability for vital bulb was 81% in metal ceramic single crowns and 66% in fixed partial denture abutments. 
Foster determined that 25 endodontically complicated rate of proxy partial dental abutment after six years, can you imagine? An initial quantification of a heart tissue removal in relation to different preparation configuration revealed to up to 70% of clinical crown is removed. When you make a full coverage ceramometallic restoration, up to 70% of the tooth is removed. This is so much. Several in vitro studies on odontom in, in, in odontically treated teeth have shown that a high volume of remaining natural tooth structure has significantly positive effect of fracture resistance independent of the type of the tooth. Up to 45 more tooth structure can be saved when you make a partial coverage or when you use a ceramic crowns. Why? Because you don't need a bulk for restorations due to the adhesive uh, and the strong bonded restorative materials nowadays. As you can see here, I started to make a mesial or partial veneer using feldspathic veneer. I don't need to make a full coverage restoration. When we talk about preparation and conservatism, now, while we have adhesive system and new generation of old ceramic, which is a bonded ceramic, and we need to preserve bulk preparation distance, we have what's so-called a new preparation design, POPT. What is the POPT? It is periodontal oriented preparation technique. This is periodontal oriented preparation technique. As you can see here, when I make full coverage restoration, ceramometallic restorations, the bulk preparation distance here is decreased. So you, the longevity of this restoration, it might have a bulb issue after six years. In full coverage, crown with all ceramic crown without metal supporting, like lithium disilicate or feldspathic or whatever, the bulk preparation distance increase a little bit, so the longevity will be higher. The final technique, what's so called a vertical prep or vertical preparations, the bulk preparation distance is the highest of the uh, the old ceramic or ceramometallic restoration, so the longevity will be higher. But the verity prep is still a matter of controversy, so I can't say it's the very it's the best thing or the bad thing. The best thing of the verity preparation is the conservatism of the tool structure. That's it. The new preparation designs, as we mentioned, we could have horizontal finish line or vertical finish line or periodontal oriented preparation technique. Here is the difference between this is a chamfer, this is a rounded shoulder, a rounded shoulder with bevel. No more this finish line could be used nowadays unless chamfer, even in all ceramic restoration, we make 0.7 chamfer finish line. Knife edge preparations, which is called vertical preparations, it could be used in some cases, which uh, uh, in case of periodontal compromised tooth, in order or in endodontically treated teeth, in order to not to make a, a lot of reduction in the neck of the tooth to avoid the fracture or weakening the teeth. Look at the amount of the reduction between both preparation. A and B, old concepts, they make strong restoration due to the increase the bulk of the material in the expense of the tooth reduction. So we have a weak tooth, but with the introduction of adhesive density and high strength ceramic, we have a strong tooth and strong restoration as well. As you can see in the A photo, guided preparations, Conservative preparations, enamel, nodentine, longevity is a higher. We need how to choose our material in different situations. 
uh, here is a very simple classification for all ceramic. We have a monolithic or bilayer. Monolithic as a glass ceramic, zirconia or hybrid ceramic. Glass ceramic like lithium disilicate, it could be pressed or milled. Hybrid ceramic like a combination between the ceramic and resin like Vita Inamic, Lava Ultimate and so on. Zirconia based ceramic. This is a monolithic and zirconia could be uh, classified as a translucency according to their translucency to high translucency, medium translucency or low translucency. And it affects by uh, the mechanical properties. By layer, it means that we have two layers of, of two different materials. Zirconia further can, could be classified as a bilayer. We could make a zirconia framework and make a layering to make it more ethically, but this will make over reduction when you use bilayer zirconia. Porcelain fused metal is a bilayer because we masking the color of the metal with a porcelain. Many restoration options such as composite resin, old ceramic crowns and ceramic veneers have become available. The current challenge in reconstructive dentistry is to obtain excellent aesthetics result while preserving the biological structure involved as much as possible. Thanks to the introduction uh, of high strength etchable dental ceramic, clinician and technician have materials and procedures at their disposal that allow them to restore aesthetics and function through a minimal invasive approach. New, gener new generation of all ceramic restorations and adhesive system allow a greater preservation of residual hard tooth structure, especially with gradual to, uh, especially with regard to single elements. We could replace this restoration with all ceramic. We could use three unit monolithic zirconia instead of the uh, ceramometallic restoration as well. Uh, we could use the glass ceramic as an aesthetic restoration. The ideal of minimal invasive dental restoration is essential for success of restoration. Thus, minimal thickness uh, full ceramic restoration have been increasingly indicated. Lithium disilicate ceramics used in the monolithic form and individualized with a staining technique. It is a material practically suited for situations of erosion or abrasion where it is necessary to replace uh, or restore damaged enamel through re-enameling. It is considered as enamel reinforcing the dentine or re reinforces the lost enamel. Uh, or for prosthetic correction of malposition or diastema teeth as well as for restoration of these in congress, uh, uh, in mal shape or color discoloration. Poor quality composite restoration. This material can be bonded to the residual enamel and dentine after etching and have a great mechanical and optical properties. Feldspathic porcelain. You could use it when you have when you need a highly aesthetic restoration. It's a highly translucent but low mechanical properties. It is 140 megapascal, while lithium disilicate is 35 megapascal, uh, 350 megapascal. This is the layering technique, which uh, get the best aesthetic results. The conventional way of making the pressed Emax CAD or Impress CAD, uh, 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 you make the wax up and then you make the investment and the ring and uh, starting to burn out the wax to make the, uh, the final uh, ceramic crown. Can you imagine in this case, this is a case of deep bite 
what do you think? It is edge to edge byte. In our school, in old concepts, they teach us when you have an edge to edge occlusion, don't use old ceramic restoration, it will fracture. This is not anymore. This case I treated with partial coverage restoration, upper and lower uh, uh, teeth. Can you see here? Let's play. She suffered from attrition. And the cause of attrition here was psychological. We start with centrifugation, recording, and full mocha protocol. And then we make a full mouth partial coverage restoration. I didn't need to make the post lower posterior teeth. I just make veneers for the front six anterior, lower front anteriors and premolars to close the diastema. And uh, veneers for the six anteriors and bone lays for the posteriors, upper molars and premolars. Can you imagine this case solved all by partial coverage restoration? Why it, uh, it will not, uh, uh, why it is not broken up till now? Because we put the ceramic under compression and we raise the bite according to the restorative space. We follow our the guideline. So when you follow the guidelines, you will reach B, point B without any risk of fracture or any risk of going to the jail. Here is the restoration. Can you see the veneers? This old partial coverage restoration. I don't worry about the bite. I don't worry if she is clenching or not. Why? Because we are going, as I said before, in a guidelines. We are following the guidelines. Let's see our patient for today. This is the last case. Uh, he came to my dental office suffering from attrition and erosion for a long years. I, I start taking a photos, as you can see. He don't, in the rest position, I can see the incisal display. I, here's a, the rule of third. We can classify uh, the face into thirds, a head, middle, and the lower of the, sorry. and the chin area, it should be equal to each other. Here is the frontal and uh, lateral views of the patients. As you can see, he looks like he is a class three, yeah? But actually he is not class three. He is pseudo class three due to attrition for a long years. After we make the analysis, I started to focus in the cause of the attrition and erosion. From the history, uh, this patient suffering from acid intakes, a lot of uh, acid intakes. And beside he was a, a stress and have a clenching. So there was no any muscle tenderness, but as you can see, all the palatal surface, there is erosion, and the occlusal surface, there is attrition. I, ha I have a combined case with attrition and erosion here. This is the initial steps, scanning. In this case, I made it all with digital workflow. I starting to make the uh, uh, occlusal analysis, digital occlusal analysis. We take X-ray photos, photographs, panoramic photographs, MRI to see the uh, TMJ condition, cephalometrics, because in that patient, we need to raise the bite, occlusal vertical dimension, but I have a very, very critical thing here. 
when the C1 and C2 very close to each other, you cannot read the bite. You need a physiotherapist first before starting bite raising. A smile design. We decide to make gingivectomy. This is the proposal of the smile design. I need to increase the length of the tooth at the gingival levels because we have an uh, erosion here, a refraction and attrition. So I decide to make surgical, the periodontist make the surgical uh, crown lengthening. Here, after one week of healing, I start to take the occlusal record in the central collation using the leaf gauge after I reach the centric relation, when uh, I'm ensured that the condyle in the most superior anterior position using the leaf gauge, I took the bite. Then I took the face record and transfer all these records to the semi adjustable articulator. What is this? If you can see here, this is the bite tracing on the semi adjustable articulator, but in the digital software. This is the central collation by tracing. I started to make a deep programmer. It's called the cost deep programmer in order to ensure the central collation is accurate and reproducible. We leave this cost deep programmer uh, to the patient for two weeks. After two weeks, we will start to make equilibration and see if this uh, cost deep programmer rechecking again if the central relation repeatable and reposition, the patient must bite on this pin repeatably in the same position. If it is right, I will proceed my treatment. If it is wrong, so I will take another central relation record. Here, the full mouth protocol of mock-up. Then I started to make a minimal reduction. This is the final preparations with bite raising. After that, we made the functional aesthetic temporary crowns, BMMA, with the desirable restorative space needed. Here is the patient after we put the restorative uh, material. This is a BMMA adapted to the finish line, we will leave this patient with this restorative material for at least three months. And every two weeks, he will come back to our clinic to make an equilibration visits. Here is the happy patient. And this is the temporary restoration. While we make a crucial equilibration, uh, every time this red point changes, due to the adaptation change. As you can see here, this is a, another visit. Can you see the intensity of the red lines? Can you see? This is the differences in the, uh, the patient before and after. As I mentioned before, he was pseudo class three. Actually, after we finished, this is the third uh, equilibration. Can you see the adaptation now? It's closed in the canine area. It was open before. This is the uh, full uh, mouth bonded restoration, Emax restorations. This is the patient before and after. Here, while using the temporary restorations. This is a happy patient after we finished before and after. And with this case, we end the final of the uh, topic today. We reach here from point A to point B safely when we follow the guidelines. I know this is a big topic. Uh, there is something will be missed for you, something you need to be understand more. So, uh, I just want to make a brainstorming, uh, let you to think outside the box, let you uh, to be uh, uh, 
to make treatment in a different way, in a minimal invasive way, in a conservative way, with most precise and conservative and uh, uh, highly ethatic restoration without risk of fracture or risk of going to the jail. Thank you so much for hosting me. I'm very happy to have you today and see you in another session soon. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Sarah, for hosting me. Thank you, Dr. Mahmoud Atiyah, for this interesting webinar. It was very nice, very nice cases. Meanwhile, I will ask your permission to introduce our company to all the participants. And I request all the participants to kindly put their questions in the question and answer box if they have any. Dr. Mahmoud, can you stop sharing your screen, please? Yes, sure. Thank you. Can you see my screen? Yes. OK. So this is our organization, Dentist Channel Online, Healthy Smiles, Wealthy Lives. I request all the participants to kindly save this number and then send a message with their name on WhatsApp so, so they will be added to our broadcast list and they receive everything about our, web, com, uh, our upcoming webinars and courses. Today's webinar is sponsored by NovaMind. NovaMind offers a full spectrum of implants and prosthetic solutions that accommodate any clinical need in modern implantology. We successfully supply highly demanded dental implant types called internal hex, tissue level, bone level, and active conical connection. Our EU production unit and product quality is appreciated worldwide. Dental implants and dental restorative solutions produced maintaining all the standards of EU medical device regulatory. Products are manufactured in Athens, Greece, and distributed worldwide with more than 1 million happy restorations. Those are the offers by NovaMind. For more info, kindly visit their website. About our upcoming dental webinars, we have a webinar on November 16 with advocate Mudit Marwa about medical legal aspects in dentistry. We have another webinar with advocate Sushant Samudrala about legal aspects of dental practice part two. If you didn't attend part one, you can find it on our uh, YouTube channel. About our upcoming dental workshop, we have an online workshop, 10 days workshop with Dr. Arushi Shaula happening on November 20 about forensic odontology batch three. Course highlights detailed online lectures, international certification with 20 CPD points, WhatsApp mentorship assignments and much, much more. I would like to invite you to join our second World Implant Expo 2021 happening on November 5 via virtual platform with more than 30 speakers, 30 CPD points and live interactive sessions. If you have any question, kindly call or WhatsApp this number or visit our website events.dentistchannel.online. If you're not a Prime member yet, kindly join our family to get free certificate of participation after every event and get exclusive discounts and offers on online dental courses, on-site dental courses, workshops, and much more. Last but not least, don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. So now we can move on to the question and answer session. 
But it seems that all is fine. We don't have any question. Let me check again. Yes, Dr. Mahmoud, all is fine, all is clear. Thank you so okay. much. Thank yes. you so much. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your knowledge and experience with us. We are looking forward to organizing more webinars and hopefully workshops with you in the future. Me too. Thank you so much for hosting me. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mahmoud. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye.